Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing today? So I figured we'd quickly go over the Combinator within Reason 10. Um, it's a pretty cool device. It's got some great uh, different functionalities and uses within it. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So I'm going to create a Combinator here within Utilities. Um, another way that you can do this actually is if you have two devices in your rack. So I'll just create, I don't know, let's create two Thors. Uh, let's go to Thor. Okay, what I can do is I can click both by holding control, right click, and I can actually click, um, where is it, combine. So that automatically puts them into a combinator for me that way as well. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just go with the blank canvas. So we have our combinator here. We have all of our different rotaries and buttons as well as uh, the show devices button. So that is where all of your instruments or effects go and then your programmer. Um, we'll get into that in a second. So one of the useful things about combinators is, is it can keep your workflow organized so you can have a bunch of different instruments within here and then just kind of collapse that and uh, yeah, it's clean. Um, another thing that's that's cool about it is you can actually insert more than one instrument within a combinator. And if you wrote them to a line mixer within, um, all of those instruments will play within your combinator at the same time. So you can layer sounds. So I'll give an example of this. Um, let's go to utilities, create a line mixer, hit tab to make sure it routed. So that goes into our from devices and uh, then what we can do is we can create instruments so let's create two Thors again um, and I'm just gonna reset them so you can see up here in our line mixer that both have automatically been routed to different audio ends within our mixer, which goes into our combinator. And now if I strike any key, both of these devices will be played. Um, so yeah, it's good for layering. Um, here, I'll just give you an example so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna pan both, and I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit on both of these, because it'll be loud. So, right, so if I were to change the tune, and I have both of these panned right now. Um, on both of the oscillators, you're gonna get a little bit of a wider sound here. Right? So they're both being activated at the same time, which is pretty, pretty neat right now. Um, so there's that. Another thing that we can do is we can go into the programmer here and we can choose any device within, and we can actually assign our rotaries or buttons to um, whatever particular knobs and, and uh, that sort of thing we have on our, our synth or our instrument or effect. So rotary one, Thor one, this is Thor one here. Let's put it to, um, let's mess with the filter. So filter one, uh, we don't want to change the type. Let's change filter one frequency. So if I were to use this rotary now, I can enable it by double clicking here. It will actually change the frequency here. So. So you can actually kind of root you know, rotary one, route root, um, rotary one, or all of these rotaries or buttons to multiple devices at the same time, which can allow you, allow you to manipulate a whole bunch of, uh, of different settings at the same time. So I could also turn this to pan. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let's just turn these off for now. What you can also do with the combinator is if I flip this around, there are uh, CV ins and there are also modulation inputs. So I could take the modulation output of, of CV1, or let's do LFO2 from Arthur, and I can put that into rotary one. And then this is the amount 
of that effect that I want sent to the rotary one. So now LFO2 from my Thor, first Thor, which is right here, will be modulating this rotary. So let's do this again and let's have it mess with the, uh, let's put the delay on and change the rate. So now you can see that's being automated and we can change the amount through here. So if we want, you know, it to be from 41 to 127 on our rate setting here, you can see now it's no longer going all the way to the left. So it's not going down to zero. Likewise, we can we can actually flip this. We could put it like this, zero, 41 to zero. So now it's inverted, right? So that's a pretty cool function. Um, Okay, um, what else can the combinator do? Oh yeah, um, you can also set different key zones for your instruments. So Thor 1, let's use this again. You can see down here there's a key range from C-2 uh, to, to G-8. So let's just manipulate that by clicking and pulling down. You can see there's a little bar here. It's actually being dragged down. So if I drag it down below C-3, this Thor 2 still has its entire key range. Um, actually, let's bring it up to right to, excuse me, thank you. Okay, so if I play any keys above C3, only this Thor will be activated. And if I play any keys below uh, B3 or C3 or whatever I have it set to here, or I guess this is A sharp and uh, B. So anything... Um, below that will will activate this Thor so so only the left one is being activated now right and if I were to bring this up still activated another octave so with anything within the zone is going to play which is pretty cool um, yeah you can also do that with your velocity as well you can assign different velocities so if you have a velocity sensitive keyboard or if you're into drawing in velocities on your MIDI notes, you can say, okay, I want this device activated for this velocity for between uh, X and Y, and then I want this device activated between this velocity. Um, and then you have a bunch of different performance controllers down here, which you can manip manipulate as well. Um, so it's a pretty useful device, pretty cool overall. Um, yeah, okay. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, take it easy.